Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, I was talking about Zephyro's Mozart music for wind ensembles, and one of you had the kindness to mention that they also have a general box of Baroque stuff, and here it is. I figured, what the heck? It's fabulous. There's all kinds of great stuff in here. So we might as well talk about it, shall we? It has 10 CDs. It's the Baroque collection with Zephyro, mostly a wind group, under Alfredo Bernardini, and it's on the Arcana label. We have, let's see, total time, 11 hours and 20 minutes of fun and Baroque frolic. So let's see what's here, shall we? Let's just open it up and, and go through it. I think we can do it by booklet. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can. Yes, this is a great way to do it because it's convenient. First, Venetian oboe concertos by Albinoni, Bigalia, Marcello, Platti, Sammartini, and of course, Vivaldi, with Alfredo Bernardini, the conductor himself, doing the oboeing. Oh, it's just delightful. These are with little tiny chamber forces, single violets, see two violins, viola, cello, bass, theorbo, harpsichord, and organ. But they're charming. I mean, played this way as chamber music. They're really delightful. And there, we'll see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the suckers. So that's plenty, frankly, you know, a couple at a time. It's enough. Then we have Vivaldi bassoon concerti. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those with Alberto Grazzi bassoon and the same basic forces as before. You know what's fascinating about Vivaldi is that after violin concertos, the most concerti he wrote were for the bassoon. I mean, who ever thought about the bassoon? Uh, you know, Vivaldi's bassoon concerti are a major part of his work, and they are delightful as well. Then we've got Bach overtures, all kinds of weird little overtures. Let's see, number one, number three, number four but no number two. This is kind of intriguing. There are some, some other overtures mixed in with those three. Uh, let's see, we've got the, the overture BWV-119R in C major for four trumpets, timpani, two recorders, three oboes, bassoons, strings, and continuo. It's reconstructed by Alfredo Bernardini from the opening chorus of cantata BWV-119. See, that's what they're doing. Their reconstructions, because we know that they were at one point or another not the way that they've come down to us. And then we have the Overture BWV-194R for three oboes, bassoon strings, and basso continuo, reconstructed from the opening chorus of Cantata BWV-194, which is Hochster Wunsch des Freudenfest. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Anything you say. Um, and these have slightly larger string forces, three violins, and first and second, six violins total, and you know, so it's fun. And you've got the whole instrumental thing. It's all, you know, very period instrumenty. but I love these performances. And so I'm not going to jump up and down. One of you said, oh my God, Hurwitz likes a period instrument performance. I like tons of period instrument performances. I mean, I've said wonderful things about huge boxes of period instrument stuff, you know, Reinhard Goebel and... And then Trevor Pinnock and, 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 and Hogwood and all, and all this. Some of this stuff is wonderful. Some of it isn't. Big surprise, right? Okay. Then we've got Handel's Music for the Royal Fireworks. Yes. Um, and this is with, you know, smaller forces. It's not the giant wind. I wish it were. Oh, I wish it were. But, you know, it, what, can, what can you do? It's with a small group. And then you've got the three concerti a due chord, which for me is the high point of this particular disc. I mean, that's, you know, the, they're concertos for two separated ensembles of things. And oh my goodness, they're fun. They're absolutely darling and adorable. So that's lovely. And then let's see, we've got, ah, oh, the water music. Handel's water music mixed with um, Telemann's water music, Hamburger, Ebb und Flut which is actually a delightful piece and a major piece, really a serious orchestral suite. Telemann's orchestral suites often are programmatic and they're just scads of fun. They're really, really fun and they deserve um, a great deal more attention than they get, probably because no one can figure out how many there are as usual with Telemann. There's just tons of it and whatnot. So then we've got Telemann overtures in eight parts. 
Um, let's see, there's one, two, three of those. Um, and they are, let's see, you've got three oboes, a bassoon, and a couple violins, viola, cello, bass, harpsichord, theorbo, you know, the usual, the usual goodies. Um, and those are charming and dance-like. Um, there's a harlequinade in the first one here and a combatant's battle in the second one. I mean, all this stuff, it's very pictorial, a la Baroque. I mean, one of the things I always, I always, you know, noticed about Baroque pictorialism is that it sounds Baroque first and pictorial second, normally, because you've got the harpsichord slanging along underneath all the time. But still, it's it, they're delicious performances of that. And then we've got a disc of Johann Friedrich Fasch, you know, my nominee for composers who could disappear and nobody would care. That doesn't mean he didn't write some good music. He did. And here we've got is, is a, so let's see, a concerto for trumpet, two oboes, bassoon, strings, and continuo. And then a, another concerto for bassoon, two oboes, strings, and continuo. And another oboe concerto with a different, with, with a, let's see, Paolo Grazzi is the oboist, must be related to the bassoonist, Alberto Grazzi. What a family that must have been. Imagine what they do around Christmas time. And then we've got, let's see, another, an overture in D major for trumpet, two oboes, bassoon strings, and continuo. And finally, on the other Fasch, Carl Friedrich Christian Fasch, not to be confused with Johann Friedrich Fasch. I mean, this must be like his son or something because his dates are 1736 to 1800, while the other one was 1688 to 1758. So there you go. And then we've got a concerto, let's see, for trumpet, violin, oboe d'amore, strings, and a basso continuo. How delicious. But the really juicy stuff is coming up right now. Oh, here it is. Zelenka's six trio sonatas, CDs eight and nine. Oh, these are amazing. For two oboes, violin, bassoon, and basso continuo. These are astonishing, incredible pieces. And these are wonderful performances, by the way. Very, very fine. I mean, you know, the classic versions were both by, by Heinz Holliger, you know, first on, on archive, and then he redid them for ECM. But for period instrument people, these are very, very nice. They have wonderful fruity timbres to the bassoon. And, and I, oh, I just, I just love these pieces. They are so wacky. They're so much fun. You know, you, you hear the, oh, and they begin with number five. Ooh, that's the, the only one in three movements. And it's insanely difficult. Oh, my goodness. It has this, it has this um, opening ritornello that's like all of Zelenka's things. It's like in prime numbers. The phrasing is so strange and asymmetrical. It's da, 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 Bum. And then the bassoon comes off like that. I don't know if I did that 100% correctly, but I mean, how many people do you know who will hum to you the Ritornelli of Zelenka's Trio Sonatas? I mean, come on, give me some credit, right? And then on the last disc, number, number 10 here, we have Dresden. It's just called Dresden. And it's things played in Dresden. You've got a Fosh quadro in B flat. That's a quartet for two oboes, bassoon, and continuo. And then a Quantz sonata in G minor for two oboes and continuo. And then Heinischen. Remember Heinischen? There was a big deal where they did some of his stuff on archive, some of that Dresden stuff. Um, his sonata in B flat for two oboes, bassoon, and continuo. These are all trio sonatas, in case you haven't noticed. Um, and then Vivaldi's sonata a quattro, and except when they're not trio sonatas, they're quattro sonatas um, in C major for two oboes, bassoon, and continuo. And we have, let's see, a sonata in C minor by Telemann for two oboes with a viola da gamba, the continuo. Ooh, how exciting. Um, and Arcangelo Califano. Nobody quite knows what his dates were. And uh, we have a sonata a quattro and another Fosh thing. Um, another uh, another quadro and Antonio Lotti. Oh, he was really really famous. Handel thought a lot of Lotti at one point. It's called Echo in F Major, for two oboes, bassoon, and continuo. And as you may have guessed, it has a movement that does echo, 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 echo. Where the parts echo. That's why it's called an echo. Isn't that smart? And there you have it. Ten absolutely splendid CDs. Here they are. 
Here is Zafiro um, with posing for their their you know close up, and it's a, it's a great set. It's just a great set. It's inexpensive. It's wonderful. It's ten CDs. It's Arcana. I mean, they just do beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. The joy in music making. It's evident in every single note. And so there you go. I hope this makes all of you uh, Zephyrniks happy. Because, oh, my Zephyronics. Zephyr, Zephyr, well, whatever you're called. Uh, they're a wonderful group. They really are. One of, one of the most delightful of all the Baroque period instrument ensembles. I have enjoyed absolutely everything I've ever heard by them. And I suspect you will too. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.